How are you doing, everybody? I'm at the Biophysical Economics Conference 2016 in Washington, and today we're going to do a special impromptu interview of Jurgen Memphis, who is the he's the uh, with the physics department of Paderborn University, and his talk was on calculus-based calculus bioeconophysics, a synthesis of social and natural sciences. Skipping forward to about one hour and eleven minutes into the talk. Memkes engages into Goethe's elective affinities. Companies and motors run on the same fuel, oil. So this is actually the energy problem, that, uh, that econ economics runs on oil and fuel. Well, what's the size of the question here? It's complicated. It's, if you have, say this was different social temperatures. Okay. You say in the country, this is the temperature of uh, South Africa and Europe. Yes, yes, yes. It yes. calculates the efficiency? Yes, it so There has to be a difference in temperature between the two social systems. Uh, it has to be. We are now talking first about the economic system. I can talk about the social system later. Yeah. Uh, this is now still the economic uh, efficiency, the temperature of the economic system in monetary units. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this is actually the, the, the Eroy. So uh, you have a, you have a different metal, met, model in your head for Social temperature, and you have a different model for economic temperature. Is that right? Yes. Well, it, you can it, convert them both into degrees. Some of those can, can be converted again, mm -hmm. but uh, they are, they are, uh, they are. Yeah, this is. They are again the same, but uh, at first I use in economics I only use uh, monetary units in physics. I only use energy units, mm -hmm. and now in social systems, I only use social, emotional, uh, emotional dimensions. Mm -hmm. So uh, and later on, we have to translate emotion into energy or capital. Okay, but you agree that whether you're talking about social physics or economic physics, all your variables have to be reduced to SI units. System inter system international uh, units. Dual, yes, I, yes, yes, you can okay. measure love in to be physically SI units. To be a physically yes, real you, model. You can measure love in SI units. Okay. Why don't you say something about how you understand Goethe? Goethe talked about how you can measure uh, the, the love in terms of the affinities and how that got changed over into Gibbs free energies. Like in the uh, um, do you want to talk about that like thirty seconds? Um, Yes, yes, I can. So you said that uh, your your point was that love can be measured in SI units. Yes. Okay. Can you explain to uh, everybody how that how that went from Goethe into phys physical chemistry? Well, and now talk about how uh, tell us uh, us Americans how we went from Empedocles to Goethe to some of your work where you cite Empedocles and Goethe, and then you go into your okay. thermodynamic form form formulations. Okay. Um, when I started my work as the head of the department, I had to do a paper, do something, and, and tell in our discussion what I was going to do. So I looked at my model. I found that societies like the war in Bosnia and my uh, my me my metals, my um, alloy, my uh, brass, had the same surface as the map of, of uh, I have this picture here. Mm -hmm. um, I thought there must be some uh, close relationship, so I used the equations of actually uh, of chemistry or physics to apply this to, to metals or to alloys as well as to, um, to, to binary uh, social systems like Catholic, Protestants, black, mm -hmm. white, and foreigners and people or Bosnians and uh, Muslims. And the phase diagrams were the same. So uh, I said, well, this is funny that it works so well. But then I realized somebody else had done that 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. That was Empedocles. And he did the same thing already, because first many objectives say you can't have chemistry and explain uh, social systems by chemistry. And then I said, wait a minute. Empedocles from Agrigento, uh, he was, um, I don't have the dates now exactly in my mind, 14, 15, uh, yeah, 40, 50 BC, 
uh, he said, uh, he said uh, people that are friends mix like water and wine, mm -hmm. and enemies separate like water and oil. Mm -hmm. So he was the first one to uh, explain social interactions by chemical interactions mm -hmm. between water and oil and water and alcohol. So this is actually the first one who started this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this theory was long forgotten, and Goethe found this by chance by his studies, and he thought this is a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. He was actually trying to understand chemistry, and he thought he knows quite well uh, about social systems because he had much experience with social people. And he Here, said, show people the, the book at home. I'll zoom in on you. He said, well, I know very well how people react, and now I can map this to chemistry. Uh -huh. And then he said, okay, uh, I will uh, write a chemical novel where two agents or two couples meet like two agents in chemistry meet, like hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. Yeah. And they meet, and at the moment where they meet, they start separating, mm -hmm. and each one takes one of the other and forming sodium chloride and forming uh, water uh, H2O. Okay. And uh, in this way, he said, people also react in the same way. They also have these affinities, and there must be also an attraction between different people, not only between men and women, but there must be for special people, there must be a special attraction, higher attraction, like in chemistry. So he applied uh, the idea of Empedocles that uh, people, uh, that the behavior of people can be explained by chemistry uh, in his novel, uh, Die Wahlverwandtschaften. And so very many people uh, love this idea very much. How do you say it in German? Die Wahlverwandtschaften. Die Wahlverwandtschaften. Verwandtschaft is relationship. Yeah, yeah. Wahl means to choose mm -hmm. or election. So, how you, so Goethe believed that that model scales up to social interactions, and you believe the same thing. Yes, and I think we can really apply these laws to people. Uh, and um, Goethe had a lot, a big success at that time, so this book was not, was very well read. It was his only, uh, his only um, natural science novel. But it was very, very controversial, though. Yes, it was controversial. Of course, many people objected, but many people were just uh, delighted to have these ideas which had come up from ancient Greek times mm -hmm. already and revived this. So, What, what were some of the re reasons that you know of that people objected in Germany? Because the one of the reasons that I know, the first English translation of Goethe's elective affinities was done by uh, was done anonymously because the person was feared for their, uh, their their books were burned at Oxford. James Froh did the first English translation and his books were burned at Oxford because it, Goethean principles contradict Christian morality. So that's one of the... Yes, this is what very uh, um, fundamental governments at that time would have thought that this idea uh, contradicts the Bible, but there have been many things already uh, Contradicting, like the Earth is not the center anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, there were, in my opinion, at that time, backward people who had not gone through the Aufklärung, the new Renaissance. Ideas, the Ren yeah, the Renaissance, mm -hmm. and especially in Germany, the Aufklärung that was clearly clarifying how things work, not from the view of the church, but from the view of science. So. Can you tell us how Goethe's day, the, principle, the main principle of physical chemistry was affinity. How does that translate into thermodynamics in terms of your work? Well, my, uh, these terms uh, apply directly to uh, the laws of chemistry, uh, which I use in my work, 
um, there are two ways to approach this. There is the Ising model, which very many uh, physicists use. Mm -hmm. And there is the Bragg-Williams model, which is used in chemistry as the chemistry law of regular solutions. And uh, I tend to use the law of regular solutions because people are not, uh, are not spins. People are, people are elements or agents with attraction or distraction. So what people can do is they can attract each other if the energy is positive, or they can distract each other, repel each other if the energy is negative, and they can be indifferent if the energy, interaction energy is zero. Okay. So these three possibilities are um, there, and atoms can only do the same thing. They can approach each other if it's positive energy, and if it's negative, they will repel, and they will just uh, mix without interaction if the energy is zero. Okay, so one question I had was that in Goethe's day, they, everything was affinities. So then in the 1850s, Thompson and uh, Berthelot had what's called the thermal theory of affinity. And they said that the measure of the chemical reaction was the heat released. But then they started finding that there were reactions that got colder. So that contradicted their theory. So then in 1882, Hermann von Helmholtz proved what's called the thermodynamic theory of affinity that says the true measure of the driving force of a chemical reaction is of the affinities of the micro interactions is the free energy change of the reaction. Yes. So how, and you dis you discuss free energy in your 2007 art chapters, is that correct? Yes, this is right. So, so right. how do you connect the the how do you explain free energies in modern terms, socially and economically? Free energy uh yeah, this, there is no social name for this. Uh, you could define it as... Well, we just call it Gibbs energy, you know? Uh, so we just call it Gibbs energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it could be called uh, social, general social happiness. Mm -hmm. Because a system, a, a, a atomic system, is stable if the Gibbs energy is at minimum. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when does the system become un unstable? And, uh, and in my opinion, uh, it is easier not to use the Gibbs, but the negative of Gibbs, mm -hmm. because you do not want the potential energy, which has to be a minimum in order to be stable. Um, and the energy in, in physics corresponds to an emotion of, co uh, of attraction, which is love, for example. Mm -hmm. And love is not a negative sign, love is positive. So oh, okay. minus E is then the positive emotion, and this is, for example, love. Mm. And um, the, like, the Gibbs, the negative Gibbs uh, 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 function is then the general happiness of a society. Oh, okay. And that one has to be at a maximum mm. in order to produce a stable society. Excellent. I didn't know that before. I was always curious why you used the negative sign. But now I see, what, I see your thinking now. To put things into context, historically there's only been nine people, including myself prior to 2007, to publish independent connections scientifically between the work of Goethe on human affinities and Gibbs on the free energies of chemical substances, as shown by the affinity free energy equation in the middle here, first formulated by Helmholtz. Those including American chemist Carl Schneider, German physical chemist Wilhelm Oswald, who did the first German translation of Gibbs' work, American historian Fielding Garrison, who wrote one of the first biographies of Gibbs, Richard Schoen, who in a lecture discussed the, what he called the red thread connection between the work of Empedocles to Goethe to affinity transforming into free energy, to Henry Adams, to Frederick Rossini, to modern thinkers such as Thomas Wallace. Memkes being one of the first to robustly connect Empedocles to Goethe to Willard Gibbs free energies at the graduate school level.